pounds, I guess. And then they started the IV. That was pretty comfortable. And then before I knew it, I was in the surgery and then out of the surgery. But before that, you came in and you made the markings and we discussed again and, you know, what my surgery was going to be. And we took pictures. We took lots of pictures. It's hard mm -hmm. to see a plastic surgeon on any day and not have pictures taken. Isn't that right, Gio? That is correct. So, Gio, I have a question for you. Now, you said that they start on an IV and you're aware that I came in and spoke to you and we made drawings and we took pictures and you actually were standing up, et, et cetera. Do you recall very much about that part or, or do you, did you sort of have retrograde amnesia? Once you got in the operating room, you didn't remember really what was happening in the few minutes before that. No, I remember the, um, no, actually I really don't. I think I was just kind of relaxed at the time. They gave me something in my IV for extra relaxing than I was. And then before I knew it, it was over, I was awake and, and that was it. It's rather remarkable, I think, that someone can have an operation. And I don't recall the specifics. It took a couple hours, maybe a little longer. Semi-tuck takes a couple hours. Liposuction can range from 20 minutes to two hours. Really. I mean, if we do extensive liposuction. And it, for you, it was like the snap of a finger. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to you, in, to you in the recovery room. Right. Well, that's quite incredible, don't you think? Yes. It, 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 like I said, it, it was very fast. Mm -hmm. so, Very fast. So we had a good anesthesiologist who helped you stay out of pain, to, to maintain comfort mm -hmm. is yes. a better way that I like to say it. Now, as I recall, you had some drains for a short I did. time. I had three drains. And uh, I had my surgery on June 14th. And so I went back to your office the very next day. Yes. And which was a Friday, so I had my surgery on a Thursday. I saw you again on Friday, and I was up walking around. I had a little bit of discomfort, but it just felt like I had done a whole lot of sit-ups. Okay, excellent. So, so let's back up one for one moment. You came into the outpatient surgery center. They started an IV. You had your operation. I spoke to you in the recovery room, and you went home. You didn't have to stay overnight. Correct. Right, so you went home and you were around someone or, or with someone, you had drains, and you came into the office the very next day. That is correct. Now, mm -hmm. Gio, I, I have to make a comment about you and perhaps for the audience. You have a remarkable constitution. Now, not everybody bounces around like you. I remember seeing you mm -hmm. the next day in the office, you had an abdo the, the abdominal binder on, and you had some drains, but you were just bouncing around. I had to remind you Easy tiger. You did. Right, mm -hmm. easy tigress. Just go easy, no yep. bouncing around, no running around. You have great energy and a, and a great constitution. So let's talk about the post-operative course from the liposuction and the tummy tuck. What was it like? Well, the very next day went into your office and then I went back the following Monday and had one drain removed. And that was the very first day that I took a full shower. And then I went back a couple days after that and had another drain removed. And then I went back the following Monday and had the last drain removed. Okay. So, so were the drains a nuisance to manage? What were they like? Uh, well, I, what I did was um, when I wanted to take my shower, because I had at, the, at that time a couple of the drains, is I just took another cloth and put it around me and then pin the drains here so I was able to use both of my arms. So it's definitely doable. Okay. So I didn't find it really a nuisance because I expected it. I, I gauged my activities around having the drains and believe it or not, I was extremely compliant. That entire time I just binged on Netflix. <laughs> so I wasn't up, you know, I did on the fourth day. I did go to the grocery store and did walk around. But other than that, I was very, very compliant, and I healed very, very well. So, Gio, uh, I think you're you're terrific, not only esthetician but patient. And I do want to emphasize. So, in general, I tell people, rest and take it easy at home for three days and three nights. doesn't mean lay in bed, but rest and take it easy. On day four, a little more activity, but don't get your blood pressure up too high. On day 11, then you slowly get back to your life. Um, now... So was there a difference be in your feeling in the areas where we did liposuction on? You, you said we narrowed your waist and gave you more curves as opposed to the area where we just actually excised and removed skin and fat? Yes, my pants don't fit anymore. 
I, I have literally lost, I've got to say at least five inches in my waist, if not more, because the pants that I used to have, which were tapered in the waist, no longer fit. So I got myself special pants that I just showed you a little while ago. So well, that Julia, actually fit my waist. You're terrific. Before we go on, I do want to mention something. A newer technique that we have, advancing tension closure of the, of the abdominal flap, where I sew the abdominal flap down to the fascia muscular wall. Sometimes we sew it down, sometimes we use a tissue adhesive. That allows us to either not use drains or get the drains out quickly. Used to be that drains would stay in for many weeks. Now we're doing that, uh, those newer techniques to get the drains out. So what do you think about your recovery and your result? Would you ever do it again? Was it a big drag? Did you like it? How are you feeling about things? I would definitely do it again, and I've recommended it to all my friends. And my friends, of course, are always very apprehensive, many times because they're afraid of pain. They don't want pain. Well, I did have some discomfort, but it was all manageable. I slept very well. I didn't lose any sleep. I was able to go to the bathroom. I, I showered. I did not stop anything with the exception of I did rest like you told me to. So um, I would definitely do it again. The results are more than worth it, and I'm very pleased with the way I look. And I, literally, I look better every single day, every single day. The scar looks better. My stomach is nice and flat. My waist is nice and tiny. Well, Gio, it's Gio Stefagio. It's really incredibly gracious of you to come on the television program and teach other people because people need to be educated. Uh, Almost everybody on the planet these days, certainly in this country, certainly in California, considers aesthetic surgery at one time or another. And it's great that you come on the program and help to teach people. Do you have time to stay for another segment? I, I wanna, do. I want to talk more in depth about skin care. Okay. 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 So once again, this is Dr. David Morwood, and this is the Doctor is in Television program. If you'd like any more information about abdominoplasty, liposuction, body contouring, I hope you'll call my office, 831-646-8661, or go to my website, drmorwood.com. That's D-R-M-O-R-W-O-O-D. I'm a board-certified plastic surgeon here in beautiful Monterey, California. We're going to take a very brief pause for a very good cause. I hope you'll stay with us. It's scary making the, the decision to have um, reconstructive surgery, but it's so worth it what you get out of it. I'm stress free. I know I'm not going to get breast cancer. Everything is back to normal and it really did not take long to bounce back. I have a, a sense of hope for other women that this surgery can help them to live normal lives. This year more than 200,000 women in this country will be diagnosed with breast cancer. For many of them a mastectomy or removal of the affected breast will be recommended as part of the cancer treatment. The idea of losing a breast for some women can be almost as difficult as being diagnosed with breast cancer. Modern breast reconstruction can help. The purpose of this presentation is to provide women with valuable information about the major issues in breast reconstruction. We'll have an opportunity to speak with women who chose different methods of reconstruction. We'll talk to experts in the field of breast cancer and we'll let you know your options for breast reconstruction. I embraced the mastectomy and reconstruction procedure and because of that I had a terrific outcome and it's changed my life in a positive way. For the thousands of women who will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year we understand this is most likely a troubling and frustrating time. We hope this presentation has been valuable to you and will help you make some very difficult decisions that you're facing. Welcome back to the Doctor Is In Television program. I'm Dr. David Morwood. I am a board certified plastic surgeon here in beautiful Monterey, California. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm delighted to have a very distinguished guest, licensed esthetician Gio Stefagio. Gio, it's great that you're here. I really want to teach our audience about the basics of skin care and what happens when you see an esthetician and why everyone who lives in California and who loves outdoor sports, who loves outdoor activities, really should be taking care of their skin. Isn't that true? That is true, especially the skin is the largest organ of the body and it is the first line of defense.
for everything, for all environmental stressors, and it needs to be healthy. Gio, I love what you just said. You should re remind our audience again of that. So the skin actually is the largest organ of the body. Yes. It's the first line of defense, and it needs to be healthy. And it we does. need to take care of it. We do. Well, thanks for saying that. I, you know, uh, that's worth the price of admission alone. So you're a licensed esthetician. Yes. And in other states, you have a master esthetician's license. That is and, correct. And in California, you know, we follow, of course, we follow the rules in all the states. But what that means is there are certain procedures you can do in other states that you would not do as an esthetician here in California. Correct. So you don't do laser here. Don't do laser, microneedling, not even supposed to do dermaplaning, but I know a lot of estheticians do, especially ones that work in doctor's offices. But it's, it's, not, it's outside of the scope of practice, according to the, okay. the Board of Cosmetology. So you do have a, you, you are an esthetician and you're licensed? Yes. Okay, so why is it that people should come in and see the esthetician and get on a skincare program and get facials. First of all, let's start about what we started to talk in the last segment about facials. Uh, you started to say that you cleanse the skin. Yes. And you, you like, let's talk about that. You have a Clarisonic device, I think you said. I do. So, so talk about how you cleanse the skin. Well, I use a, a type of a cleanser and it depends on the skin type. It could be a gel if the person is acneic or have oily skin or it can be more of a milky type of a cleanser for a dry or mature skin like mine. And then I cleanse the skin very well, twice usually, especially if somebody is wearing makeup or if they have oily skin, they get two cleanses. If a person has got really bad acne and maybe they have open acne, then they probably will only get one cleansing, so not to irritate um, the acne further irritate the acne. And then I, under, under a magnet lamp, magnifying lamp, I look at the skin's condition. And with that, I'm able to see if the skin is dry or it sometimes other conditions, melia, also known as whiteheads. Okay. Um, those things are very apparent under mag lamps. Okay, uh, G G let me interrupt you for, for one moment. Now, when you cleanse someone's skin, do you cleanse everyone's skin in the same way, or is there a kind of a custom-designed approach? And the reason I ask that is because when you send people home with a regimen, I think we do want to customize their whole skincare program according to their skin type and what's going on with them and what they need and what they want, right? It's not a one-size-fits-all. No, it's not. And, and the, a perfect example of that would be somebody that's got clear skin compared to somebody that's got active acne you would not clean the skin in the same way. Um, maybe somebody has got really healthy skin and you can be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more, you can apply a little bit more tension, for instance. It just depends on what's going on with the skin at that time. Okay, so step one is properly cleansing and yes. washing, cleaning the skin, okay, and then what? Then inspection. And then inspection, and then prepare for the mask. Usually everybody gets some type of a mask. And uh, sometimes the mask comes with a steam. Sometimes this, it's just the steam and then the mask. Sometimes it's a steam with the mask. It just depends on the product. For instance, an enzyme you would use with the, with the steam. Um, another type of a mask, you might just use a mask, no, no steam at all. Or I might do a microdermabrasion and then the mask. It just depends on, on what, the, what the, the skin care I'm going to provide. Okay, excellent. Now let's, let's kind of summarize the basics of skin care. If someone's gonna go home and get skin care, or take care of their skin at home. What I like to t tell people is I equate it to the dentist. The dental hygienist you'll see two, three, sometimes four times a year, but that's not enough. You've gotta do the flossing and brushing at home, right? Yes. So you, as an esthetician, can do facials and skin care and skin treatments. They can come to our